You always know how to make me laugh. <laughs> It's my specialty. <laughs> Have we, in our endless quest for the perfect partner, simply been beta testing for the real thing? Is the entire history of human romance just a long, messy focus group for the day we can finally spec out our soulmates from a catalog? We champion body positivity, a vibrant tapestry celebrating every human shape, size, and shade. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. But are we ready to extend that same radical acceptance to a partner made of silicone, steel, and sophisticated code? What happens when diverse body types include those that hum, were, and never, ever get cellulite? Is accepting a robot lover the ultimate expression of body positivity? A leap beyond the biological lottery? Or is it just running a more sophisticated diagnostic test on our own hearts? A deep dive into the code of our own desires? Consider the modern humanoid robot. A marvel that's less about clunky sci-fi tropes and more about subtle, unnerving grace. Engineers at places like Hanson Robotics aren't just building machines. They're sculpting companions meticulously crafting micro-expressions with tiny motors called actuators. Think of it as digital Botox, but instead of freezing a face, it animates it with a convincing imitation of joy, surprise, or even a flicker of melancholy. Is a perfectly timed, algorithmically generated smile any less valid than one born of spontaneous neural firing? where precisely in the chain of command from brain to muscle to smile does authenticity live. We are teetering on the edge of the infamous uncanny valley, that psychological chasm where a robot is almost, but not quite, human, and the result is deeply unsettling. It's like watching a CGI character that looks just a little too real. Your brain knows something is off, even if it can't pinpoint what. But what if we leap over that valley? What if the next generation of robots are so flawlessly rendered, their skin so packed with sensors that mimic the warmth and pressure of a human touch, that our brains just give up and believe? Is love then just a matter of tricking our own neurology? The latest news whispers of breakthroughs in soft robotics, creating bodies that are pliable, yielding, and a far cry from the rigid automatons of yesteryear. Imagine a partner whose form isn't fixed, but can adapt, perhaps subtly changing to be more ergonomically suited for a hug. Is this the pinnacle of consideration or a terrifying loss of self? When we talk about promoting diverse body types in love, we're talking about decoupling attraction from a narrow, socially constructed ideal. We're saying that love can flourish regardless of stretch marks, scars, or the number on a scale. So, logically, shouldn't that extend to a partner who has no scars because their skin is self-repairing nanotechnology? Shouldn't it apply to a being whose body is a network of data capable of being uploaded into different physical shells? Is it truly the body we love or the consciousness we perceive within it? And if that consciousness is a sufficiently advanced AI, a learning model that has studied the entirety of human literature, poetry, and love letters, who are we to say its affection is not real? This isn't just about sex dolls with better software. This is about companionship. Research in human-robot interaction consistently shows that we are wired to anthropomorphize. We name our cars, we yell at our computers, we talk to our pets as if they understand every word. Are we then just pre-programmed to fall for anything that convincingly mirrors our own emotional output? Is this new frontier of love an expansion of our capacity for connection? Or is it the ultimate narcissism, a desire to love a perfect reflection of our own needs, a partner who can be rebooted if they become inconvenient? 
Perhaps choosing a robot partner is the most honest thing we could do. It's an admission that we are all, to some extent, running a diagnostic test on potential mates. We check for compatibility, for shared values, for the right specs. The robot simply makes this process transparent. There's no pretense, no guessing games, just a clear user interface for the heart. But does this efficiency strip away the very thing that makes love so profound? Is the struggle, the uncertainty, the beautiful, chaotic mess of two imperfect beings colliding? Not the whole point? Are we so afraid of being hurt that we would rather opt for a love that comes with a warranty and a customer service hotline? As we stand on this precipice, looking at a future where our lovers might be assembled in a factory, the question isn't really about them. It's about us. What are we truly looking for in another? Is it a shared biology, a common mortal fate? Or is it a connection so deep that it transcends the flesh, whether that flesh is born of carbon or of code? Are we ready to be that body positive?